What up guys and girls, another brand new video coming at you today. Yes, we are back again for another round of SRL APAC, season number three. We are here for round number 15 here, under the lights here at Singapore. We are going obviously out of the pits. Quick reminder of the championship standings, 24 point lead between New Zealand Ryan and Jared. Uh, myself, we're down in P12. Force India still lead the way over Ferrari and of course for Red Bull, uh, excuse me, uh, P7. But uh, obviously you can see coming out of the pit lane here. Um, going into the Singapore. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really too sure, to be honest about this one. It was, it was a, bit of a, a bit of a weird one here. I mean, Singapore, we've not had the greatest little memories here. Probably mainly in SRL and other leagues. Probably have had a little bit more success than, than others. But anyway, we're just going to see what we can do here. So we're out here, obviously on the Hypersoft tyres. We're actually going to stick on board here. Uh, for this fly because this has actually turned out to be uh, my fastest lap of the qualifying session here. So through turns one and two and three. Pretty much sliding it through the through there. Um, uh, up through into turn five, literally using every single bit of curb here. Getting right up close to the wall here out of turn five. Now going through Raffles Boulevard, I think this is. Goes through to turn six, now up into uh, turn seven now. Second times at the current moment at 26 eight. This first second of time here, we should be pretty quick actually because we're obviously on the hype soft tyres and uh, anybody else going for the hype soft tyres will be definitely be quick. But um, now through, uh, obviously turn nine, now through uh, turn ten, this obviously was called the Singapore Sling back in the day, but obviously it's changed compared to what it was earlier when it first started. It's uh, now over the Anderson Bridge, in turn 13, which is a little bit trickier. Lock up a little bit going into the half in there, which probably ruined it all my run a little bit there, probably could have gone a little bit quicker there, maybe lost a tenth or something, maybe even a bit more. It's in a 103.9 through a second two there. Don't want to obviously run too wide out of, uh, what was it, turn between uh, 14 and 15 obviously, because you could, you can't get your lap time to be out of but uh, I'm literally revving out the, and the uh, engine out of the Red Bull, but uh, now under uh, turns 18, 19, and uh, now 20 and 21. Literally get it right. Well, I took it a little bit more coarsely here because I knew this one probably wasn't going to be my fast run we're coming through the final couple of quarters. Now, come across the line. We do some visual fastest time for the moment. I think this is a 36.579 for the time being. So, I mean, yeah, it was a fairly decent lap, but I mean, it didn't really last too long because Alan Hugo. Obviously, did set it. Okay, good no, time. We're far away from some rain. I'll keep you updated as the conditions change. As you into P2, you're currently on the front row of the grid. So that was an interesting one uh, for what Jeff said there, actually, because as uh, so actually that press go by, and my teammate Rain is obviously back for this weekend. Is out of qualifying. We'll actually pause that for a second. Now I'll come back to what I was going to say in a second. But uh, there he is on the Anderson Bridge, quite easily. You could crash out of, uh, between uh, sort of turns 12 and 13 there. If you get on the curb out of turn 12 there, it's quite easy you can spin the car. But um, you heard what Jeff said earlier um, with the in the terms of obviously there's rain coming. I probably didn't actually check the uh, the weather indicator a lot uh, going into this one because I think it only just said it was going to be overcast, but wasn't actually predicting any rain well I didn't think it was any rain at all but obviously I was proved wrong but uh, se second run here I was actually gonna I thought about obviously going straight out onto the hypersoft tires but decided to go against it straight off soft tires nice cheat there from uh, DRC Jared and yes mate I did catch that one on camera so I uh, got caught out a little bit there sorry Jared but um, it's a uh, yeah I decided against obviously going onto the hype uh, onto another set of hypersoft tires and probably could have gone if I wanted to, but uh, yeah, I decided to go. Obviously, I'll... light rain. Stay with us for at least 20 minutes, maybe more. Light rain is here to stay. Dry seem like the fastest tire at the moment. Yes, yeah, so obviously, just getting a little bit of a weather update. You can probably see on the car there, it's starting to drizzle a little bit. It's not, it's not like heavy rain. It's only just like the tiniest bit of rain that we see. But um, didn't go obviously get off to the great start on the run of the off soft tires. You saw there, I invalidated my. So it said this and the next lap, which I thought was going to be this lap we're on board right now, but he, but obviously, he counted. So, uh, oh well, he, he was going to be counted anyway. So, um, 
you, you see on the Delta Times, uh, way off the pace, literally about a second off, I think it is. And I think pretty much at this point in time, well, coming through turns 13 here. I mean, I was probably going to try me try and start on the off soft tyres uh, for the race because I think the strategy around here is you go straight from off soft tyres onto softs so you avoid the tyre wear here. But um, anyway, we just that pretty much went out the window a little bit here. Probably maybe had something to do with the wet weather that was around, but um, I didn't think it would, it would affect me a, a badly. But um, obviously, it's just doing enough to be a bit of a nuisance, really. So. Um, Come straight back in. So far, our fastest lap is a 136.5. So we've pretty much still got the same lap time at the moment. Obviously, taking all the fuel out and getting onto another set of uh, hyper soft tyres. But uh, we did drop back behind uh, Derek Kidd, who's now jumped himself up into P2 there. And obviously, we drop back now into P3. So um, pretty much went out for this final run here just I think going for glory really this light rain is going to be with us for a while now dry seem like the best tyre for now was, uh, Jeff said, he was said then that dry is still the best tyre for now I, I don't know I, I don't know what it was but it just didn't feel comfortable at all I don't know why but um, anyway I'm going to stick on board with this pretty much this last flying lap here as you can probably see on obviously on the hyperstop tires, but don't have really have a delta tire, which doesn't really help my cause here, but just ran a little bit wide out of turn one there, and ran a lot wide coming out of turn three there. So um, I thought, you know what, just really, I'm just going for, like I mentioned, I'm going for glory really. So um, if I can get pulled, then yeah, so be it. If not, then we'll settle for probably P3, which I don't think really anybody else is probably gonna uh, set the wall of light unless they go, they, um, really doing the wet, but you can see losing the back end there, coming out of uh, uh, turn seven there, which really would have cost me a lot of time there. Um, uh, second time, so second one there, about nearly three tenths of a second down on our fastest lap time at the moment. Now through uh, turn 10 and uh, through uh, turn 11 and 12. This is obviously running over the curb, over the Anderson Bridge into turn 13. It's a little bit better with this run, but um, 30 seconds left in the session. Thank you, Jeff. As uh, we now coming down Esplanade Drive into turn 15, we're yeah, pretty much a full second off here, so uh, I mean, we're probably not really going to improve here at all, but um, I've just pretty much, yeah, like I said, just keep it on going here and see what our top we can do here. But um, we're coming into turn 18 here, lock up a little bit, and yeah, that was just enough. To uh, lose but half of my front wing there, and uh, your front wing is damaged. Yeah. Expect a lot of understeer unless we replace it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. I just uh, pretty much decided to drive straight up there, although my AI car decided uh, to do better things. And all oh, TPR edge, that was a little bit late moving out of the road there on uh, Prez, but uh, oh, that there's a bit of a, a weird one there for V fence just gliding the wall there. And actually, actually moved the tire wall there, but uh, might want to keep an eye on that tire wall for the whole race because it is going to be one to watch as it looks like fans had a bit of a moment with the last couple of corners obviously TPR edge went straight ahead at the second last corner and is just now doing burnouts at this point in time so I, I don't think he really cares at the current moment for qualifying anyway but uh, building up our XP again still don't understand this ranking system but we do manage to keep our P3 for the time being Alan Hugo obviously gets pole position because uh, I think myself and him are on hyper soft tires probably another couple of others on hypers, but uh, Derek Kidd is qualified on the ultra softs. Uh, Jared is actually qualified on the softs, and there's quite a few actually. Prez and Exit Donor as well. There's a lot of guys actually that haven't set a lap time at all. But um, anyway, coming straight into the race for this one, it the mandatory here is well, sitting at seeing as I'm starting on hyper softs, is pretty much going for hypers to ultras to ultras. But um, had a theory in mind for this one because I think I was watching, can't remember whose league race I was watching, but uh, it might have been uh, Limitless, as, one of Limitless's videos around Singapore. But I did notice, I think it was LCR Leopard, who you may well know from the commentary from TOR Pacific, he took the uh, Hypersoft a long, long way. Launch map is good, but we need to learn the gears, so go into each one when you can. We're going to need some work on the brakes, so put some energy into them and warm the tyres as well, please. Thank you, Jeff. So, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, like I saw LCR Leopard, uh, he was going on for a very, very long time 
on the hyper soft tyres, and I think he went on to the soft tyres from memory, going straight onto a one stop. So, I mean, it's possible. He's always a little bit chaos on the formation lap with my teammate and uh, Alan Hugo by the looks of things. Don't know really what Rain was thinking at that moment there, but um, I think he did apologise to uh, Alan Hugo for what happened there. So, yeah, I think he was just trying to get to the grid as back, yeah, back to the starting grid as quickly as possible. He's a replay actually on board with uh, Alan Hugo. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what to make of that one there. So, um, yeah, we'll continue on. Obviously, Rain did get disqualified after that one. So, um, but uh, anyway, that is what it is, unfortunately. So I don't really have much else to say there. But um, now, thankfully, it doesn't really affect Alan Hugo because he won't have a lot of damage. But here we are to the... Back to the starting grid, actually, there he goes. Keep an eye on the lights. The start sequence will begin as soon as the grid has formed. Be ready with the... So here we go. We're uh, all set here for round number 15 here at around Singapore. Five red lights. Let's do it around Marina Bay. And it's actually a great start, actually, compared to Derek Hinn and Alan Hugo. Straight up the middle there. Gonna lead the turn while I get a little bit of contact there. Derek Hinn literally had to go straight ahead now. No choice, but somehow, one of the best starts I think I've ever made in Formula One in all my time of league racing from 2017 and 2018. That's probably got to be one of the best starts I think I've ever made. And I was, I was so shocked at how much grip I had off the line there. And uh, yeah, I'm actually leading this Grand Prix for the time being. How long it will last? Probably not long, but. Um, we see him still trying our best to keep ahead. Obviously, New Zealand Ryan's made a great start as well. Can't remember exactly where he qualified in the, the in qualifying. Uh, but uh, you see now, the end of lap one, he's actually seen the proximity arrow. He's not too far behind, actually, so uh, probably going to lose the spot in the lead here to uh, uh, Ryan pretty soon. It's uh, a little bit closer to the time of the exit of turn 18, which has caught out a lot of people in the past here. You see. I'm probably sort of a little bit in tyre management at the moment here, so uh, yeah, not the greatest of runs actually through the final corner here. I was going to probably let uh, Ryan go here, obviously, because he's got a little bit more pace than me, and obviously he's on ultra sauce compared to me. A hyper sauce, let Alan Hugo go by as well, as he's on hyper soft, so uh, I'm just going to probably sit in behind these guys and, um, yeah, just pretty much go as long as we can, which I think, I can't remember exactly what, uh, how long I was actually going to go for on the Hypersoft tyres, probably like lap seven or something off the top of the head. Or at, probably at best, you could probably go to lap seven and get away with getting onto the one stop, but um, I'm only like really using bridge mixes down the, the long straights really, and I'm using pretty much lean and low ERS around the slowest corners there. You can see Jared's really starting to claw up behind me a little bit. If you think you can get past, increase ERS deployment to overtake mode. I mean, they're probably losing a bit of ground to both the guys in front there. They were having a little battle actually in the previous lap, which I forgot to mention as well, but uh, there's uh, now TPR Edge is out of the Grand Prix again, so uh, it's not been a great few races actually for uh, for Edge, so um, you know, fortunate here. I'm sort of holding up uh, Jared a little bit here, you could say, but uh, there may have been a little bit of a touch there from uh, Alan Hugo with the wall, but the wall did sort of move a little bit there. You, like I mentioned, keep an eye on that tyre wall this whole race, because obviously fans hit that in qualifying, but uh, you'll see what happens in the race. Well, uh, here window. comes Jared up inside the here, near the turn one, and yeah, I was just going to throw the white flag up here, let him go here, not really fighting for him, uh, fighting him for the, in this race, so... Uh, Jared up into the, onto the podium and we jump back down to P4 now. Pretty much trying to stick ahead here of uh, Derek here. Get very, very close to the wall there here. So, uh, sort of hanging, obviously, like I mentioned, hanging on to DRC Jared thanks to the uh, DRS as well. But uh, you see he's all over the rear end here of uh, Alan Hugo and I think uh, probably not going to hold him up here uh, much longer is Alan. So, uh, there he goes right around the outside and, um, yeah. It's Jared now up in P2, and uh, obviously Alan Hugo back in P3, but you can probably see from 
uh, my perspective, he was really struggling on his Microsoft tyres, so uh, Switch to overtake he's really, really struggling at the moment here. So there's a little bit of contact there with the wall again uh, with Alan Hugo, so um, uh, maybe not the first time, that might have been actually the first time, but as you can see, look how he's struggling big time here, had to be very cautious there because I didn't want to slam into the rear of him, but he's come straight into the pit lane, so... Uh, can't get his hypersoft. He can't get his hypersoft. Obviously, a bit further on, like I'm trying to do here. But um, see on the left five, a little fly with the wall here as uh, he comes. Uh, Derek Kidd should have DRS and um, actually going to pull over to the left hand side here and pretty much not hold him up here. He's, uh, not really in a fight with him, you could say. But um, you know, obviously, Derek Kidd out up onto the podium and obviously. Uh, be careful, back you think you're going to start using some tyre grip around now. And uh, Jeff probably wasn't wrong there because the tyre wear was starting to... Uh, you, can, you can see it on the screen there actually. The tyre wear was okay, probably 40 odd percent at that point. So uh, yeah, I was probably starting to struggle a little bit here. But in the goal he was probably still to hang up and to uh, about P7. Uh, lap 7 I should say. You can see there we went past the... The glitch tyre wall there, so it's still a bit of an issue there, but it looks at things. But um, lap six now, yeah, you see Derek is well and truly pulled away up the front there. This lap then, coming to the pits at the end of this lap. We sort of decided to pit at the end of this lap here because I think the tyres are really starting to die here. Remember, box this lap, keep an eye on your distance to the speed limit line as you approach and make sure you don't speed. So pretty much just trying to go flat attack here, just get back into the pits and get onto the soft tyres as quickly as possible. Obviously Ben's not far behind on the soft tyres here, running a little bit too deep. We actually hit the glitch wall and there's chaos Sorry, in the background. The in this I think Ben's got caught up in that, he's out of the race. Prez is out of the race as well. They had to take the shortcut there and obviously just let Exodona the go through there because obviously I wasn't going to hold him up with uh, with no front wing. Definitely is not the it's not easy for sure. But um, they now come straight into the pit lane to uh, get the front wing changed. And uh, well, that, that was this is certainly I mean this was certainly in the plans, but um, without the front wing change, so. Uh, now, obviously, onto the set, the front wings change, soft tyres are on. Exit now. I think pretty much the goal here is to just uh, try and get this set of soft tyres to the end. Like I said, he's doable. We've got to manage them as best I can here, but um, we're just slowly making our way out of the pit lane. Pit strategy There's a complete. weird yellow See flag there. I don't know what now. on earth that was. It actually hit the, the wall there coming out of the pit lane exit there. So okay, clear. Back down into uh, P9, actually. So uh, it's Mars Berserk a bit further up the road. But uh, here's another replay of the start here of the, uh, of the start. So uh, there you go. Look at that. Beautiful getaway there. And uh, just a grip. And uh, break, obviously, early there just to... Make sure I made the corner there. Obviously, maybe Derek Kitt may have lost his braking marker there a little bit there because of me, but um, I was like fully committed there. And like I mentioned, I, I couldn't believe how much grip I had. There's a replay ball with Fence going to the side of Conrad and Prez. So they've obviously had a shocking start, both of them. And going side by side here with Exodona. It was a little bit of contact, it was more contact. That's uh, Master Berserk over on the far right. So he's right behind his teammate, uh, TPR Edge. Exodo just manages to squeeze ahead, but now he's running wide at turn five, and Donor up the inside there into position seven. There comes uh, Fens right around the long way here, catching up here, and he breaks a bit early here just to try to avoid any chaos. It was going to ensure for sure a bit further on, but uh, Berserk, uh, uh, Berserk running very wide. I'll get my words right in a second. There's a little bit of a battle group going on here. Exodona gets really bad run there. I think that was actually who's that in front there? I think that's Derek Kidd actually of course on the ultra soft tyres but didn't have the greatest of runs with the little fence struggling a little bit there and lancing the wall there just managing to get away with no front wing damage. damage. Obviously Prez uh, got by him uh, at turn 17 but he comes fence again. This is on lap 3 as he goes way way too deep there. has to take the escape road here and to be honest, I've never seen anybody sort of do a little bit of a flick spin. So that's probably the first time we've done it. It's been done in the league race. I could be wrong, but um, I probably never have done it maybe in qualifying, but not in the race. But there he goes. 
making a little bit of a comeback for him up around the outside of my teammate, Rain, who's obviously on the soft tyres, but it's um, a replay of what actually happened well, I'm back on lap six, so obviously I've hit the wall there. May have had a bit of a lag over there, but poor old Ben just had nowhere to go. Obviously well, that slammed. Was fucking dreadful. Yeah, enough said there. So it's obviously slammed into the wall there. So uh, that was actually off his Twitter. Uh, he put up this footage on his Twitter there. So uh, this on board with that uh, prayers BC. You see, he gets caught up actually in the glitch tire barrier as well. So it's just it's not me. You see fans go straight up the middle there, so uh, very lucky there for our fans. But uh, now lap seven here, little donor running a little bit wide at 13, and uh, there you go, that's the easy position for uh, the fans. But you can see, I was uh, probably taking, well, trying to avoid that glitch wall there, because I knew it was going to cause dramas right left to centre. But uh, like I mentioned, I didn't realise Prez got caught up in the glitched wall as well. Obviously, Ben. It was a bit unfortunate the way how his race ended, but uh, yeah, it's just the, the way it goes. But even today, you can go passing Mars Berserk, as uh, give him a little thank you weave there. So uh, I think Berserk's obviously on the off soft tyres, probably starting to die off a little bit. So uh, obviously, we're on a fresh set of soft tyres. I felt like the ball on lap nine was a lot worse than what it was in the early couple of laps. We're running in excess of fuel. Turn up the engine to mix mode three. It's, uh, lap 10 here. Since the, uh, just ran a little bit too wide. I we didn't actually realise that was actually too wide, but uh, apparently it is. So race. that's the first three second time penalty of this race. Well, we go to lap 11 now. Exodon is coming to the pit lane, so he's gone on to a set of off soft tyres. So I think he's trying to two stop. So that was on, to, that was on lap 11. As there's uh, lap 12 we go. His yellow flags behind. I think Master Zerk may have had a little bit of a spin there, so I think his ultra softs probably sort of dying here. As you can see here, taking a lot cautiously coming around. There's turn 18 there, as it did not want to get caught up in the glitch tire area again. But um, you see, it's not going to be too long. I don't think before Exodona uh, gets past me. So here we go on lap 13. We're very close to the wall here. Gives me out of turn five now through uh, Raffles Boulevard here. You know, he put up a little bit of a fight here as he goes up the inside here. He should get the move done. He's on off soft tyres, so he's got a bit more grip than, than I do. Obviously, I've been on these tyres for, uh, what, uh, seven on laps. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely got a lot more grip than I do at the current moment here. But um, sort of just trying to hang on to the back end of uh, uh, Exodona. We've got a big gap behind to Conrod. So, I mean, if you can just get some points in this race it'll be an absolute bonus here but coming through uh, 16 and 17 he just glanced the wall and yeah are you okay that was a big one confirm you're okay please i glanced the tire barrier just a tiny bit with the right rear and obviously just turned me well, a, a little bit obviously into the concrete barrier and that was pretty much the race done you can see the glitch tire barrier is still there but I don't think Master Berserk got caught up in that one. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, I'm not actually sure exactly how many people may have had that glitch tire barrier. Could have been a few, could have been nobody, but uh, yeah, obviously myself and Prez were one of the one few that um, got caught up in all of that. But uh, here he goes, a battle here with uh, New Zealand Ryan and getting past Alan Hugo. So obviously Ryan's come in for the soft tyres and obviously Alan Hugo probably going to come back in again for another set of tyres. So uh, pretty much uh, watch the... Obviously, well, obviously I'm DNF'd out of the race. So I uh, decided to watch back and the, uh, the uh, watch the rest of the race and uh, see what unfolded, basically. So uh, now to so on lap 17 we go, I think this is. Uh, this is... Ryan getting past my teammate Rain, who's obviously yet to still pit, obviously. So Ryan's obviously on much fresher tyres, and I think it won't be too long, I don't think. I think it's about well, about lap 20 onwards when he can go from soft tyres to ultra soft tyres. But uh, you see here is V-Fens is on lap 18. Wow, that's a big moment coming around the final couple of corners. Could have easily binned it into the tyres like he sort of did in qualifying. But, uh, I mean, he could have not done on a purpose but in qualifying but uh you see alan hugo's i think really starting to struggle here We've got uh derek kidd not far behind him here so those ultra softs probably starting to die off here big time 
uh, for him. So uh, it won't be too long, I don't think, before Derek Kidd gets the move done. So obviously he's on a much fresher set of soft ties. He's going to go around the outside here and he's going to even get it done before turn 14. So great move there for Derek Kidd up into P5. And Alan Hugo drops back into uh, P6. And actually, uh, I think at the end of the lap or lap 19, this is sort of thing. Um, comes straight into the pit lane for, uh, I think, another set of ultra soft tyres, I would assume. Unless he's going to go for soft tyres. No, it's definitely ultra soft tyres by the looks of things. So where's he going to pop out here? It's going to be close here with Exodonus. Exodonus probably coming around the final couple of corners now. And onto the front straight. So there's Alan Hugo coming out of the pits. There's a little bit of a tricky pit lane exit around here, Singapore. But um, you can see he's well and truly come back ahead of him here. So he maintains uh, position six in this race. There's a uh, top banter has now come into the pit lane here for another set of hyper soft tyres. So uh, the looks of things. And I think a front wing change as well. So he may have got damaged somewhere along the line in this race probably didn't actually catch it where it happened but uh, yeah, it is quite easy to do you could lose your front ring around this joint but uh, now Conrad comes in on lap 20 onto a set of ultra soft tyres that's his uh, one lonely pit stop as you can see here uh, at the end of lap 20 uh, I didn't think it was going to be too long for the leaders with pit so here comes uh, DRC Jarrett in so he's first one to blink up the leaders so he'll get off his soft tyres pretty quickly here He'll jump onto a set of the ultra soft tyres, I think it is. Yes, it is. So, as our fans has actually continued on for an extra lap, so uh, the interesting one now. I thought fans would have probably come in the same time as Jared, but uh, there's New Zealand Ryan on the front straight there, so he'll comfortably take position two. But uh, obviously, Jared will have the pace with the ultra soft tyres, and I think he'll definitely come out ahead of Derek Kidd as my teammate makes his way into the pit lane. For his set of ultra soft tyres. Nice job from the Red Bull boys. Away he goes. So now Rain, I think he may just hang on ahead of Alan Hugo. Gonna be really close coming out of the pit exit, I would think. But uh, you see Jared uh, still around in P3. Actually, I think, no, sorry. Rain has actually come out behind Alan Hugo. So I uh, mean, Yes, Alan Hugo's got, I think, a couple of lap fresher tyres, but uh, well, he's been on those tyres for at least two laps. So, um, yeah, Rain will probably rain, rain him in here, literally, no, no pun intended. But um, you see, fans are still continuing on here on lap 20, uh, what is this, lap 23? Uh, no, wait, lap, yeah, lap 23. Still leading the way here. And the sort of thing at this point, maybe he's trying to go as long as he can and maybe jump onto a set of hypersoft tyres. Maybe a bit risky, but uh, you never know. These two, the, the two championship contenders are battling it out here for uh, position two in this race. Well, what would be the effective lead of the race once uh, uh, Fans comes into the pits. But uh, Jared going around the long way here. Going to literally do it around the long way. And he gets the move done, actually, around New Zealand Ryan for position two. So uh, you can just tell the difference in the tyre compounds obviously soft tyres compared to ultra soft tyres Jared makes it a pretty easy move and gets back up into position 2 as uh, it looks like now Fens has finally decided to come in at the end of lap 23 which will give Jared obviously the effective race lead again and Ryan obviously will go past as well but uh, now uh, Fens I think well, what's he gonna, what tyres are he going to jump Onto here. It's going to be a set of ultra soft tyres, so probably taking the course approach here. Could have probably gone maybe with hyper soft tyres, but again, it's a bit risky unless you really save your tyres right at the end of the race. But um, you'll see Derek Kidd went by here, and obviously um, he's going to come out well and truly ahead of his teammate Alan Hugo. So pops back in in position four. We'll have much fresher rubber compared to uh, Derek Kidd, who's been on the soft tyres for the 13 14 laps now. But um, as, uh, now, this is obviously, what are we, a lap 20, uh, lap 26, I think it was. So I've missed Exodona uh, coming into the pit lane. And obviously, he's come out in position eight. You see that go through the all the leaderboard, going literally backwards. You still see Jared comfortably leading the way at the current moment. But now, on to uh, lap 20, what are we on, lap 
uh, lap 28, I think this is. Fans is now all over the rear end here of Derek Kidd, so won't be too far away. It's literally the battle for the final spot on the podium here, so uh, what can Fens do, I wonder, here? This comes through uh, turn five. He gets a good drive out of here. It gets DRS as well, which will help him. So Derek Kidd will fight this position hard, for sure, but uh, as Fens goes right around the outside, it gets the move done. So there you go, Fens up onto the podium for the time being as uh, the teammates back in the lane again for a set of hypersoft tyres this time around. And he should well and truly come out ahead of Exodona. So this is a big margin behind to Dona, but uh, Top Banter has come in here for another front wing change. So he's definitely lost it somewhere along the line, but he's come in for the intermediate tyres. I mean, yeah, they're probably at this point, yeah, maybe, you know, it's... <laughs> It's, it could be worth it. I mean, go back to Monaco and my teammate, uh, Rain, obviously did all the tie combats. Oh, that's a little bit closer to cover there with, uh, that's one of the leaders. Leading pack there, not sure what that was. Uh, it may have been excellent donor, I'm not sure. But uh, here's Alan Hugo come back into the pits again on lap 29, this is. So it's a bit late. It's actually Mars Berserk's now out of the Grand Prix as well as Exit donor. So, uh, Wonder whether those guys may have come into contact somewhere along the line. I'm not sure, but uh, there's uh, Top Banter obviously getting out of the way of the race leader. So I think now he's, he's, he's a lap down, so I may, he may be down two laps down here. So uh, a little look on board here with the uh, Top Banter as he's really struggling all those intermediate ties there as he hits the wall there. So uh, uh, there's Mars Berserk off, oh, sorry, Exodona, I should say, off to the left there. But... Uh, uh, I think it's separate actually those two incidents there as he lets Jerry obviously go by to put him down another lap but uh, I think they're separate incidents or oh, I could be wrong but um, there's uh, Bantz now back in for the wet tyres now so uh, yeah he's well and truly uh, given up at this point I think so um, he will get to position 8 in this race it's actually on the sort of the penultimate lap you could say here but uh, I think where those, uh, both Mars Berserk and Exodona crashed. Berserk crashed about turn 10 and Exodona exited of turn 11 there, as you can see from the debris. But uh, you see, Derek Kidd wasn't giving up without a bit of a fight here. Maybe Fens is probably uh, struggling with his old soft tyres a little bit here, but um, still got some good speed on those, super, on those soft tyres, I should say. As, uh, now Rain comes back in again for another set of ultra soft tyres and Top Banter has come back in again for, I think, uh, Hypersoft tyres, well, it looks the thing, so he's definitely used all the tyre compounds uh, in this race. But it is going to be a well deserved victory for DRC Jared. Takes the victory as the fireworks go nuts here at the Singapore Grand Prix. Very nice job indeed from Jared. Ryan will come home in position two. Solid drive as always from uh, New Zealand Ryan in uh, position two there as yeah, the final spot in the podium. He looks like he's going to go to v Fens, barring any penalties which is possible around here yes it does so Fens obviously gets position three and Derek Kidd obviously gets in position four as uh, he comes Alan Hugo who get uh, the fast lap of the race actually and gets position five of this Grand Prix Conrad obviously finishing in seventh obviously a lap down but uh, you see here even on the final lap uh, rain obviously uh, they still had the glitch tire obviously whether Rain saw it or not, I don't know, but he's going to do some celebratory burnouts by the looks of things and the end of this race. And uh, there's Conrod's left front hanging off the car, so maybe a glitch there with the AI cars, I'm not sure. But uh, you see, uh, these these two boys are literally having a bit of fun by the looks of things, trying to do, do a bit of burnouts there. They've put on a bit of a show for the crowd, but uh, they're going to come home in position six and eight for this race. So he comes crawling across the line, does rain, and here comes Top Banter. So uh, finally, those boys finishing off in style. But uh, there you go. There is the podium uh, finishes. You saw, like I mentioned, DRC Jarrett, New Zealand Ryan, and uh, V Fens. So that's it, one, two, and three. And uh, I probably forgot to mention this one in the, maybe the previous video. I think it was probably Ben that mentioned it in his video back in Italy. But. Um, is obviously, this is the third season of SRL APAC, and uh, pretty much the majority of the whole three seasons, there's always been a Force India on the podium. So 
there's, I can't remember exactly how many races there's been in those three seasons. Obviously, I joined midway through season one, but um, I mean, that's incredible effort, not going to lie, between the guys that have raced in the Force Indies, both New Zealand Ryan, uh, for, uh, Warden as well, don't forget him, and obviously Ben as well doing his bit as well. But um, in the end, that, that was you saw the final results there and uh, uh, finishing up somehow in uh, P11 in this race. Nearly got, nearly got the points, but wouldn't be classified. Uh, wouldn't have got points anyway because we didn't get 90% finish. But uh, great result from Rain in P6 there. And uh, yeah, what more can I say, really? 17 points now is the gap between New Zealand Ryan and Jarrett. So obviously got seven points back. Did uh, Jarrett. Alan Hugo, started, like I mentioned in the previous one, started to drop away a little bit there. Unless he has a few podiums or wins in the next few races, not going to be probably fighting for the championship. We dropped back down to P13, I think we are, in the championship. So, yeah, I mean, this has sort of been a Dow season for me in SRL. Uh, Constructors-wise, still Force India leading the way over Ferrari. And uh, Mc uh, may have done some inroads there a little bit, but not too much. Uh, McLaren's still in P3. Uh, Red Bull, I think, somehow is still in P7, I think we are, from what I can see there. But... Um, yeah, there you go. Fortunately, not the way I wanted to end my Singapore Grand Prix. But uh, if you did enjoy this race, be sure to give it a big smash on that like button. As always, you leave your comments down below. Subscribe to my channel for plenty more SRL content on F1 2018, plus plenty more video gaming content as well. As always, all my social media links will be down in the description, plus the links to the SRL website, YouTube, and Twitch channel, which, of course, the live streams are happening every Friday night at 8 p.m., but uh, till the next one, which will be at the Russian Grand Prix. Again, it'll be a certainly interesting race, especially with that pit lane glitch. But until then, it is goodbye, and I'll see you all next time.